So this will be a brief discussion on the PEP-PTS, uh, which is the phosphoenol phosphotransferase system, uh, and I'll be discussing this for Dr. Blair's microbiology class. So a couple of the key terms that you'll want to know for the PEP-PTS is the phosphoenol pyruvate, which is the high energy molecule that supplies the phosphate group for the system. You want to know that phosphorylization is the addition of a phosphate and dephosphorylization is the removal of a phosphate or lack of a phosphate. Uh, preferred substrate is a molecule a bacteria wants to use, which would be glucose and E. coli, for example. And a non-preferred substrate is a molecule a bacteria can use but would choose a better option if available, which would be fructose or maltose and E. coli. There will be three enzymes in this system, and that will be enzyme 1, histidine protein, and enzyme 2A. Uh, enzyme 1 will be the first enzyme to steal, so to speak, a phosphate from the phosphoenol pyruvate. And the histidine protein is the second enzyme that is stolen, that the stolen phosphate is passed along to. This will also be important in inducer expulsion, but we'll hold on to that for later. And then enzyme 2A will be the third enzyme. The phosphate is passed to, and it will phosphorate both preferred and non-preferred substrates depending on which is flowing into the cell, and it will bind to transporters and adenylate cyclase also depending on what process is taking place in the bacterial cell. So transporters allow for the inflow of a substrate, preferred and non-preferred. Adenylate cyclase uh, will convert ATP to CAMP depending on if it's being utilized and cyclic AMP or CAMP binds to an operon to activate genes that will allow non-preferred substrates entry into the cell and they will enter via the transporters that were discussed. So a little bit more background information. Um, the PEP-PTS is a system utilizing the phosphate taken from high energy molecule phosphoenol pyruvate and this phosphate is passed down a series of enzymes. Uh, this process involves a bacterium being able to somewhat choose their substrate, not like they have a brain, but they're able to choose their substrate. Uh, the three ways for a bacteria to choose its substrate will be catabolite repression, inducer exclusion, and inducer expulsion. And three main enzymes that we've already discussed will be E1, HPR, and E2A. The ratio of phosphorylated to dephosphorylated E2A will regulate the response, and we'll discuss more when E2, E2A is phosphorylated versus dephosphorylated. And finally, the substrates are phosphorylated to lock them into a cell and dephosphorylated to release them. And getting a um, substrate phosphorylated is the goal of PTS so that you can have the substrate in there for the cell to utilize. So first we have catabolite repression, um, and that will be when you have a phosphoenol pyruvate, and the phosphate is passed along to E1, and then HBr, and then E2, phosphorylating each one each time, and dephosphorylating it as it passes it to the next one. But after E2 is phosphorylated, we have two different options, and it's listed here in word form of option one and option two, but I have two different slides with the images, so... Here's the work form if you want to pause the video and write that down or if words help you better, but I'm going to discuss it as we look at the images. So as we said, we will have PEP pass its phosphate to E1, then HPR, then E2A. Well, when a preferred substrate is in inflowing to the cell via a transporter, the preferred substrate will be phosphorylated to lock it into the cell. And now E2A is dephosphorylated. Well, this dephosphorylated E2A will bind to adenylate cyclase, and it will prevent it from converting ATP to CAMP. So this CAMP can't bind to an operon and activate it so that non-preferred substrates could enter the cell. But option two has it to where there is not a lot of preferred substrate coming into the cell. So again... You start with PEP and the phosphate is passed along, but in this case there's no preferred substrate there being utilized, so E2A stays phosphorylated. And since it's phosphorylated, it cannot bind to adenylate cyclase, so 
it will be uninhibited and it will be able to convert ATP into CAMP and CAMP will activate an operon and that operon will turn on genes so that uh, non-preferred substrate transporters can allow for non-preferred substrates into the cell and then E2A will phosphorylate non-preferred substrates to lock them into the cell. Next we have inducer exclusion um, and here it is in word form again but I'll discuss it as we look at images. So it starts the exact same way so the phosphate will be passed along from, to, to the enzymes from PEP. And in this case, we have a preferred uh, substrate being uh, flooded into the cell via a transporter. And E2A will phosphorylate this preferred substrate to lock it into the cell. And the dephosphorylated E2A, last time it was binding to adenylate cyclase, well this time it will bind to a non-preferred substrate transporter and this transporter will not be able to let the non-preferred substrates enter. And that's what um, this one does for inducer exclusion. Now for inducer expulsion you start the exact same way but there will be a part where we switch and we have a preferred substrate become available and we're starting with a non-preferred substrate. So again, here's the words, but I'm going to go ahead and flip to the image. So, we start with PEP, phosphate, 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 and then again, it's dephosphorylating as the phosphate is passed along. But for step one, if we're using a non-preferred, um, there will not be enough preferred substrate for this to be dephosphorylated. So this phosphorylated E2A will not inhibit adenylate cyclase. ATP will be converted into CAMP, and CAMP will bind to and activate an operon so that genes will turn on the uh, non-preferred substrate transporter so that it can allow for the non-preferred substrate to enter and be locked into the cell. But once the preferred substrate is introduced into the cell, HPR will actually steal the phosphate from the non-preferred substrate and it will pass that phosphate along to E2A and E2A will phosphorylate the preferred substrate to lock it into the cell and the dephosphorylated E2A will bind to the uh, non-preferred substrate's transporter so that the non-preferred substrate cannot enter anymore. And this right here, this is important of it taking the phosphate away because now that it is dephosphorylated it will flow out of the cell because it's not being locked in anymore. So to review we have whether E2A is phosphorylated or dephosphorylated is critical to this process and catabolite repression is uh, when a bacteria will intake a non-preferred substrate if a preferred is not available and remember in that we had adenylate cyclase um, converting ATP to CAMP, CAMP activating an operon, and an operon activating genes so that non-preferred substrates can be used. And then we had inducer exclusion, where bacterial cells will not intake non-preferred substrates when preferred is available. And with inducer expulsion, we started with a non-preferred substrate, um, so bacterial cells will get rid of non-preferred substrates in order to intake preferred substrates when it becomes available. So we started with non-preferred, but preferred showed up and we said, oh yeah, we want that. And in this, you remember that HPR will steal that phosphate from the non-preferred so that it can flow out and exit. And that is about it. Thanks for watching.